All right, guys, so basically what we got is we have the lab itself that we're going to do. This is the one that I sent to you, you know, via email. We have our little circuit card that goes along with our diagram. We've got resistor 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, and 3. And then we have 4, 5, and 6. Little connection points down here at the bottom. So we got a little wall wart DC power supply we're going to plug in. And the other side of the power supply will connect to this little wire here which is just a speaker wire with a connection on it with a fuse in the past so we don't blow up anything and then along the length of this wire are these little wire ties and a portion of the silver wire has been stripped out and a portion of the copper colored wire has been stripped out and what this is going to do is allow us to power up our little circuit board this wire keeps going and going and it's made to set one of these little connection points in uh, right at the chair point on the tables as we go down the table. So that's what you would have done. You'd have stretched this wire out across your table. Of course, the guy by the wall would have, or the lady by the wall, the human being, because that's what we all are. So I'm going to take and I'm going to connect my power supply to my little jumper wire and then connect my power supply over here to my power strip. Okay, so at this point, I should have power all along this wire that we've got made out of speaker wire. So, folks, in the automation program, one of the big things that we teach students is to follow procedure. I mean, everything is documented nowadays. You've got procedure for, sometimes you open the lid of a box and it's going to have a set of steps on how to open and unpack the rest of the box. I noticed that when I bought my last TV. But anything in industry, we've got documentation. There's step-by-step -step procedure for installing step-by-step -step procedure for troubleshooting step-by-step -step procedure for calibration so everything is set up in procedure so that's one of the things that the automation department actually harps on is following procedure because if you know how to use some of the test equipment and you can follow directions folks there's not a whole lot of stuff you're not going to be able to do so yeah reading and following directions is real important so that's what we're going to do we're going to follow this lab and as we go through it follow along with me make sure that you write down any of the values either in the step number or if you can get the lab itself to print out go ahead and write it on the lab so first thing we want to look at is the objective it says upon completion of this lab the student will be able to Calculate anticipated voltages and currents based on given parameters. Measure voltages with point-to-point -point and point-to-ground references. Measure or properly configure their multimeter for measuring current and measure current through a given resistance. And so here's the procedure. We got the diagram, figure one. Step one says clip one end of the black wire, that would be this one, to the post in the lower right-hand corner of the circuit board as indicated in figure one. So we're gonna take our little circuit board, connect our black wire to that lower right-hand corner. It says clip one end of the red wire to the post in the lower left-hand corner of the circuit board as indicated in figure one. So we're gonna take our little red wire, connected into that little post on the left hand side of the circuit board and it says clip the other end of the black wire to the exposed silver colored wire so we're going to take this black wire the other end of the black wire and connect it to the silver point that has been stripped 
Next thing, it says clip the other end of the red wire to the exposed copper colored wire. So the red wire connects to the copper colored wire. Okay? Alright, so turn the page. It says set your meter up to measure voltage. So what we're going to do Take our meter lead, connect the red V-hole, and then setting it up to measure voltage means I'm going to turn it to the voltage setting, and it says measure the voltage applied to the circuit by placing the black test lead of your meter on the post with the black wire clip to it and the red test lead of your meter to the post with the red wire connected to it record this voltage in the space provided. So what we're going to do is going to take the meter leads, connect the black wire to the post where the black wire is connected, connect the red wire to where the red post is connected, if I can see, and we measure 12.33 volts. 12 Point three three volts. So we're going to take and write that value down. 12.33 volts for step 6. Using this voltage, calculate the voltage drops across resistor 1, 2, and 3 and record them in the appropriate space in table 2. So we have a calculated column and a measured column. So we want to do the calculations So we get our meter set up, put in engineering mode, second fix, three places. And so we're going to look at our resistance values. I have a 1 kilo ohm resistor, a 2 kilo ohm resistor, and a 3 kilo ohm resistor. And they're all in the same path. So this is a series circuit, so we simply add these values up. So if we add these values up, 3 plus 2 plus 1 equals 6 kilo ohms. So the total resistance is 6 kilo ohms. Now we have to find current. So total resistance is equal to 6 kilo ohms. And then to find current, we're going to take our voltage, 12.33 volts, and divide it by our total resistance. So the 12.33 volts divided by the 6 kilo ohms gives me 2.055 milliamps. So my current is 2.055 milliamps. Okay? So 2.055 milliamps. Now, in order to calculate voltage, we multiply our current times each one of the values. So, to find the voltage across R1, I'm going to take that current and multiply it times 1 kilo ohm. And that gives me 2.055 volts. So, voltage R1 calculated would be 2.055 volts. Alright, so <clears throat> find the voltage across R2, we're going to take our current and multiply it times the 2 kilo ohms. So recall my current times 2 kilo ohms. That gives me a value of voltage of 4.11 volts across R2. 4.11 volts across R2 in the calculated column. The next one, R3, is 3 kilo ohms. So I'm going to recall my current and multiply that times my 3 kilo ohms and that gives me a value of voltage of 6.165 volts. 6.165 volts. Now that's the voltage calculated across each one of these. Step 8 measure the voltage across R1 as indicated in figure 2 and record that voltage in the appropriate space in table 1. So 
Figure two tells me to measure the voltage across R1, I have to stick the black lead right here in the corner and the red lead on the other side of the resistor. So I'm going to bring my circuit board and I'm going to connect the black lead to this side of the resistor and my red lead I'll connect to this side. And I can read on my meter that I'm measuring two point, well, I'm measuring 2.057 volts, 2.057 volts. So the measured value for VR1 would be 2.057 volts. That's pretty darn close, folks. The only thing that would affect it would be the tolerance of the resistor. So that resistor must be pretty darn close to the value it's supposed to be, 1 kilo ohm. So we got the voltage measured across R1. Turn the page. Now it says measure the voltage across R2 as indicated in figure three and record that voltage in the appropriate space in table one. So figure three I'm looking, it tells me to put the black lead on the right hand side of R2 and the red lead on the left hand side of R2. So we take our little circuit board, take our meter leads and we're going to put the black lead on the left hand side of R2 and the red lead on the right hand side of R2 and we measure 4.10 volts. 4.10 volts. So we write that value down in our table. 4.01 volts. Oh, 4.10. That's my dyslexia of the brain. 4.10 volts is our value of voltage for R2. And then it says in step 10, measure the voltage across R3 as indicated in figure four and record that voltage in the appropriate space in table one. So we look at figure four, it tells me to put my black lead on the right hand side of R3 and my red lead on the left hand side of R3. And so we're gonna measure the voltage across R3 we got the black lead on the left hand side, the red lead on the right hand side, and we observe the meter display and it says 6.16 volts, 6.16 volts. So the amount of measured voltage across R3 would be 6.16 volts, 6.16 volts. Calculated as 6.165, pretty darn close, folks. So our calculations prove true with the measurements that we've just made. So, moving on. Step 11, calculate the voltages at test points A, B, and C as shown in figure five and record these voltages in the appropriate spaces in table two. So remember the test points, it's always referenced from ground. So my ground point is over here all the way where my black lead is attached to my circuit board. So if I'm measuring from that point, and I measure test point A, well I'm measuring the voltages across all three resistors. So I can add those up or simply realize that it's connected to the red point or where the red lead connects to my circuit board and it would measure my total voltage. So test point A is gonna measure that 12.33 volts. Okay, now calculating the voltage at test point B. Again, I'm going from ground to test point B, so I'm measuring across both R1 and R2. 
So I go back to my chart over here and I find the voltages that I had measured for R1 and R2. Uh, I'm sorry. For R2 and R3. R2 and R3. So I'm going to take and add those together. So the 6.165 volts plus the 4.11 volts. That should give me a voltage at test point B of approximately 10.275 volts. So I come over here and test point B should be about 10.275 volts. And if I look at test point C, I'm measuring from ground to test point C. So I'm only measuring across R1. So I go back to my chart, the voltage across R1 is going to be 2.057. Now that I got my glasses on, I can see that no, I was right the first time. So if I'm measuring voltage across or at test point B from ground, I'm measuring the voltage, the combined voltages of R1 and R2. Not 2 and 3, but R1 and R2. So that would be R1 voltage of 2.055 volts, 2.055, plus the voltage of R2, the 4.11 volts. And that gives me a total of 6.165 volts. So test point B should be 6. 165 volts okay now it says measure the voltages at test points a b and c as indicated in figure 5 again figure 5 and record these voltages in the appropriate spaces in table 2 so table 2 we're going to take our meter black lead goes on ground so we simply connect our black lead to our ground point and then we've got test point A which is up here in the top left hand corner and we measure 12.33 volts like we talked about that's our source voltage so the measured is 12.33 volts pretty darn close now it's exact <laughs> so anyway again going from ground up to test point B we calculated 6.165 and we're measuring 6.16 6.16 volts so test point B measures 6.16 volts all right, now test point C should be the voltage across R1. So again, we go to ground and we go to test point C and our meter reads 2.057 volts. 2.057 volts, just like we had. 2.057 volts, okay? Awesome. Now, it says measure the voltages across branches 1, 2, and 3 as indicated in figure 6. So we're going to turn the page. And it shows, figure 6 shows branch one at the bottom branch two at in the middle and branch three up at the top so I'm going to put my black and red wires on either side of these opens now folks if I was to go over here and measure the voltage or the currents to, per se I would be messing up because there's no resistance in my path 
when I measure current from here to here. But if I measure current from here to here, now current has this resistance that it has to flow through, limiting the current, therefore we protect our meter. But right now we're measuring the voltages across each one of these branches. So the voltage across branch one, black lead here, red lead here, I'm measuring the 12.33 volts, the full voltage. You see folks, right now this resistor is in series with an open in this path. The open means that there's no current flow. Well, with no current flow through the resistor, Ohm's law says there's not going to be any voltage drop. So what we see is that there's zero volts here, and I have a total of 12.33 across the whole thing, that I have to have all that 12.33 volts measured across the open. And sure enough, I do. So I'm going to come back over here. And across branch one, I got to 12.33 volts. Now notice the way these circuits are, these paths are connected. They're all connected in parallel, which voltage does what in parallel? That's right, voltage stays the same in parallel. So I should measure the same voltage across each one of these branches. So come over here and measure the voltage for branch two. Put my meter lead on that side, my red lead. 12.33 volts, folks. And then come over here and check to, uh, branch three. And again, 12.33 volts. So I can record that voltage on my data sheet. So. 12.33 volts, 12.33 volts. Voltage stays the same in a parallel circuit. Okay, so now we've got that one done. It says, and when that's big, black, and bold, it says stop. It says before measuring current, oh, 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 I'm getting ahead of myself, not following procedure. So I got step 14 up here. Step 14 says using the voltages measured in step 13, calculate the current through each branch and record those values in the appropriate space in table three. So we got the calculated values for branch one, branch two, and branch three. So for branch one, we got 12.33 volts and we know Ohm's law says divide voltage by resistance to get current 12.33 volts divided by branch 1 has the 1k in it 1ee3 that gives me 12.33 milliamps of current flow so the calculated value would be 12.33 milliamps of current flow. Again, we had the 12.33 volts cross branch two and we got the two kilo ohm. So the 12.33 volts divided by the two kilo ohm equals 6.165 milliamps. So we write that down for branch two. Six point 165 milliamps. Okay, branch three, I got the 12.33 volts and a three kilo ohm. So I'm going to take the 12.33 volts divided by the three kilo ohm, and that gives me 4.11 milliamps current flow. 4.11 milliamps of current flow. Now notice the smallest resistor has the largest amount of current. The largest resistor has the smallest amount of current. That proves the relationship of resistance and current being directly proportional or 
I'm sorry, inversely proportional. The relationship between voltage and resistance is inversely proportional. Now, stop. It says before measuring any current, you must set your meter up properly. Move the red test lead from the volt ohm terminal and plug it into the slot marked milliamps as indicated in figure 7 and set the dial to the milliamp setting also. So if we look at figure 7, we see the common and we see the milliamp pole. So we're going to take and move our red lead from the volt ohm terminal over to the milliamp microamp setting and we're going to turn the dial to the milliamp setting on the meter itself. So now we got the meter set up. Step 15 says measure the current through each branch as indicated in figure 6 and record these currents in the appropriate spaces in table 3. Okay, so we're going to measure the current. We're going to put the black lead here and the red lead here on our circuit board. So we got the black lead here and the red lead here and we measure zero current. That's because somebody has used this meter before and blown the fuse in it. Believe it or not, I was a Boy Scout. <laughs> a Boy Scout. And the motto is, be prepared. So yeah, I brought another meter just to make sure that this didn't happen. So again, I'm connecting the meter leads up to the common connection in my milliamp microamp hole. And then I'm going to measure current flow by putting the black lead right here and the red lead right here. God dog it. This one must be blown too. I did not prepare for that. Alright, so hold on. I'm going to stop it and then there's going to be just a few minutes left. I'm going to replace the fuse. Sorry folks. Hold that thought.